class, we talked about the difference between average, okay, between average velocity and then the velocity at an instantaneous point. And I saw that some of you might have needed a little bit more help on that. So I decided to do an additional example where we compare these two different velocities. So I'm looking at problem 63, and this is page 66 through 68, I believe. Okay, and we are given a scenario where we have something falling again. Let me get my book. Okay, so we have a water balloon that's being dropped from a window, and we are told that high above the ground falls at y equals 4.9 t squared. So that is the function that we're given. And we have to find the average speed during the first three minutes of fall. So average speed. So we want to find the change in distance or the change in position over the change in time. Okay? So we're going to be at 4.93 seconds. And then we started off at zero seconds. So it's the change in distance over the change in time. And when I do the mathematics, we end up with 14.7, and I believe it's meters per second. So that's the average speed of this whatever water balloon that's falling. Now in part B, they want us to find the instantaneous speed. So at three seconds, what is the speed? Now I expect it to be greater than 14.7 because we know it's accumulating, getting faster and faster the more time it falls. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let, I'm still going to look at t when it's 3, but then I want a number that's just slightly larger. And we're going to call that h plus 3. I'll put my variable first. Okay, so give me my pen back. h plus 3. Okay, and that is just a number that's slightly larger than 3 seconds. So we're going to look at the change in position compared to the change in time. So my new position will be 4.9, and then it would be h plus 3 squared, minus 4.9, 3 squared. All over, and the change in time is h plus 3, minus 3. Okay? So now let's do some basic algebra here. So we're going to square the binomial. So I get 4.9, and I end up with h squared plus 6h plus 9 minus, and that constant is, if I do my math, I think it's 44.1. And we notice in the denominator, 3 minus 3 is 0, so I end up with over h. Continue to do the mathematics. We should get 29.4h, and then it's plus 4.9h squared. And then notice how nice the constants are inverses of each other. So they undo each other. And I'm left with over h. Now remember, we're wanting to find out instantaneously what happens here. So really what we're doing is we're looking at what is the limit as h gets closer to 0. Okay? Now we notice here we have an h that's common. So we're going to factor out the h all over h. And then those reduce. So then, according to my mathematics, whoops, 4.9h, there we go. If I substitute h for 0, then I would end up with the speed being approximately 20.94 meters per second. Okay? So this is how we use limits to be able to find instantaneous velocity at a certain point. I hope that this example helped you.